once again, people, and welcome to yet another episode of Seeking Shamblers. This time around, we're going to be digging through stuff that's involved with three-wave capture, one of the biggest and most popular modifications for Quake. Um, we've seen three-wave capture 2.30 released in October 14th and 90 sets. That's like the earliest version we have. Um, the problem with that one was that the capture the flag flags did not actually work. Yeah, that one was so early in its development that we really didn't have functional flags. They just was sort of placeholders more than anything. And so yeah, needless to say, we had Capture the Flag, but it was totally worthless in that version. 2.51 came along in November 6th of 1996 and started fixing things up. It started making it a bit better. It actually made Capture the Flag actually work. You had some basic little mechanics and that's really the basic version of this whole thing. Um, but now, a couple days later, on November 13th of 1996, they were starting to work towards the third version of 3-Wave Capture, the 3.0 beta, basically. And by the 20th, they had released the full release of 3-Wave Capture. And there also was a 3.1 released um, on, like, November 27th to 28th that basically just fits us up Ziggurat Vertigo. Now, all these versions... Our, our, the big thing about the 3.0 release was that it was all about the custom files. Basically, the uh, stuff that was included with um, the modification. So, basically, it added custom um, entities, like custom flags. It added some custom sounds. And the biggest thing of all, and the thing we really care about, is the custom maps. Basically, all the maps here are basically treated as um, betas, essentially. So, basically, they have all B in their name. Actually, no, that is actually the older documentation. Actually, the one we have here is just actually just the regular name. So, it's like CTF1 and CTF2. And we basically have an episode of them. Basically, think like E1M1 to like E1M8 to something like that. Except they're all called CTF. Just like DM1 through DM6, this is CTF1 through CTF8. So yeah, we have eight maps of these to check out. This is going to be poss possibly the most ambitious thing we've had to tackle yet, needless to say. Um, this one definitely is rather big. And the biggest complication with this one is that we can't use 3-Wave Capture th uh, 3, any of the versions of 3-Wave Capture 3, because... It was all designed to basically be played on the server. It was not made to really be played as your own individual thing. Basically, these files exist as assets only. They don't exist as anything you're supposed to be using on your own, really. So we have eight maps that essentially aren't really intended to be used outside of a specific server. So needless to say, it's not exactly the best of situations. But we'll work with it, and I guess we'll basically see what we can see. So yeah, this is not really made to showcase 3-Wave Capture 3, because I don't really have 3-Wave Capture 3. I have the assets of 3-Wave Capture 3, which is basically the best you can do. That's kind of why I'm not, like, waiting and trying to, like, go forward and see if I can find the other files, because this is all that really is included, just the assets. So, waiting would do nothing. This is basically the stuff we should showcase. And so the best I can do is use the last version of 3-Wave Capture that included the progress.dat file, 2.51, which was released a couple days prior. So I'm not sure how big the difference is between 2.57 and 3.0 are outside of the custom files. Um... Uh, the cust uh, the way 3-Wave Capture 2. Dot z or whatever worked basically was that you had regular files. Basically, you had the original vanilla maps and you would have two Capture the Flag bases. Now, the two Capture the Flag bases, there were two of them, as said, and it basically was designed via an ENT file. Basically, it was its own separate little file that you'd have to... Uh, 
use QBSP with only ENTS to basically overwrite the original versions of the files. Because it couldn't distribute the original versions of said files, it made it a lot more of a pain to get it working. And therefore, the big thing of 3.0, now we're having its own custom maps, and they no longer have to rely upon the vanilla levels. So that's the good news. The bad news is that it's assets only, and therefore, like I said, I don't even know how well this is going to be supported, how well it's true to the original version. I have none of that. Maybe one day, one of these 3.0 versions will be released to the public, but... Every version that I have found from November of 1996 does not offer any support whatsoever for the client uh, playing as its own version of it. It supports the client connecting up to this one server, but nothing more. So, basically, I am working within what I have to essentially showcase you guys um, the best I can. I, and like I said, it's not really designed to showcase 3-Wave Capture 3.0 because of that. Because I don't know what the original 3.0-Wave Capture would look like. If there was any real changes in the progress like that, I assume there would be. Um, probably some bug fixes and things like that, at the very least. But at least what we can see here is the map files, which is what Seeking Shambles is all about. And therefore, what I'm going to bother really showcasing here. So anyway, that's been a giant ramble. But anyway, as said, these are what the levels are, what the assets are about. Let's check out this particular level. Um, as said, it cannot be used in any form, but for playing on the 3wave.com, this is not a full release. You may not extract them and use them on the servers. Please wait for the full release. This is test bugs are being ironed out. Um... And that was basically the beta 2 release. But at the same time, we also had the normal capture the flag um, three wave capture that was the full version. As in the actual full full release of this thing. And it still was not released to the public. And let's see if that documentation actually says anything about that. Um, yeah, basically it can't be used in any form but for playing on the server. None of these were full releases. Um, so yeah, even though they were actually made to be the official full version, it no longer says beta in the releases, and it was a 3.1 release, um, it still is the case that they didn't distribute any progs like that. Kind of like I do for my server, I don't distribute the progs like that, because it's intended just for everyone to kind of play on the server. But in this case, that means you're not able to see the custom maps or anything like that, unless you're brute forcing your way through it. And like I said, this is the best I have to work with, so let's see how this all works. <laughs> anyway, I'm checking out CTF1, logically. This is the only map in this whole series made by Dave Zoid Kirsch who is the one who made 3-Wave Capture and is relatively famous, therefore, for it. Um, but this is the map that he made. I'm assuming it was probably made as the first custom map for 3-Wave Capture as a big um, conceptual thing. And then other people came along and made their own levels to add to the whole concept. But this is the map that was made by Dave Zoid Kirsch, possibly as a contested environment, possibly as its own first real map. But it is CTF1, it is the first one to really do. And therefore, it's a good idea to get an idea of at least the custom models and at least get to see one of the um, eight maps. Anyway, this is called McKinley Base. And I guess that's really all I have to really work on that. That's all I really have to say about that. Okay, so let's see here. Let's load up CTF1 and see how badly this freaks out. Oh, I, apparently I didn't close the... See, there's readme documentation inside of the PAK file, so I try and open the PAK file. And Quake doesn't like loading PAK files if you have the PAK file open. Very important thing to remember. <laughs> and something I tend to always forget to do when ripping out resources. Honestly, messing with PAK files can sometimes be a hassle. Anyway, let's get back to what I was trying to do, which is get to CTF1. Um, actually, before I do that, maybe I should try and see how well it works with the capture the flag based element of this thing. So what I'm going to do is type in team play 69, I think it is. Oh God, no, that's that's the project one. What what's the team play value for capture the flag? Oh God, I completely forget. One second, people. One second. I, I completely forget the team play value for 3-wave capture. It's a weird number, 
and I can't remember it off the top of my head because it is such a weird number to remember. Um, it is Team Play 256. Yeah. Like, anyone in their right mind would think of t uh, t Team Play 250 sets. But that's because there's a bunch of other weird Team Play values. Um, basically, it's like if you do Team Play 1, it does one thing. Team Play 4, and it's like combined bit codes to do their own little weird things. So you have to go up to 250 sets before you even get to capture the flag. Um, like, t the Team Play 128, I think, allows you to throw backpacks. Um, and then there's other weird things like that. But we don't really care about any of those because we don't really have anyone else we're playing with in here. So all I want to see is the Team Play 256 to, to see the three wave capture spawn points. And then I want to do CTF1. There we are, finally in the freaking level. So here we are in McKinley Base. This is also happens to be one of the first real November maps we've seen. I did see Manson 1 a little while back. Manson 1 happens to be one of the earlier Quake levels um, that was released for November. But then we kind of stopped. I had to go back and do a bunch of October stuff. And now I'm back. And the first thing I really noticed is that there's custom textures. Look at that. Fancy little capture the flag textures. You can see like red lines and blue lines. And you can see areas designated bases. Apparently it's the hammers versus the lightning. I see. And here we have like a little central area whereby like the people would be fighting. And this is like the central arena base mentality of this thing. Kind of standard for your capture the flag base map. Usually to capture the flag you always have the two bases. And then you have like a little area on the side to battle. So you see here's like where all the ammo and all the resources would be. So you have like your grenade launcher here. Thunderbolt here. Oh look emergency ways to get to each base. You have them like in the water. So let's gather some of the resources that exist down here, like the red armor. I'm also here in a teleporter, interestingly enough. Where's this go? Where's this spot about? There's a weird mysterious spot. Ooh, rocket launcher. That's always good for decimating capture the flag base environments. And that really is what that bot seems to be about. Seems like it's almost favoring the red team, isn't it? Because it's somewhat leaning towards the red spawn location. Okay, where's this go? This just leads back to a uh, standard location where you start between the two bases. Simple enough. Also, the interesting thing is I don't think the capture the flag base elements seem to work on this level. Yeah, if you notice, I didn't really get the capture the flag base elements to actually do anything. So, yeah, I don't think the three wave capture aspects of this map will work. At least we get to see the level. That's really what this is about, right? We get to see the level itself. Even if we don't get anything else, we get an asset rip, if you will, of the level. So let's head down here and see what the bases look like. This is the blue base. Let's pretend we're on the blue team for a moment. Or maybe we're on the red team. I have no idea. I don't think we're on any team. I'm assuming there would be a flag in here, but I'm not even sure it will appear because of this being, you know... A level without actually flag entities or all. But as you see, fancy little technical area. Oh god, I got dizzy there. Fancy little area in the McKinley base. What is McKinley, by the way? I have no idea. But yeah, you have little areas to go. Little things like that. It looks like little staircase that goes somewhere. And this is a little area whereby you have like your little base. Now the question is, where would the flag be located in this whole mess? That I'm not sure about because as said, I'm not sure if like... We'll even get a flag. There's three secrets which are very interesting. That's probably the part that's going to drive me the most crazy. Is this way going to lead to the water that we saw before? As you see, here's all the guns in the map. We found all the guns. We can say we found all the guns. Where's this lead? Weird. We have this little one room that just leads nowhere. Aha! Where's this lead? That was useless. But yeah, basically this connects the two rooms for some reason. Maybe this is where the flag would be? Because it seems rather weird to have a weird, empty, useless room like that. But sadly, as said, we're not really going to see the three-wave capture base aspects. Honestly, the way this is ba basically we're playing it, it's being played like a standard deathmatch level, sadly. Um, so while this is fully intended for capture the flag, this is a capture the flag map. We don't really have capture the flag here, if you kind of notice. <laughs> Mainly because of the whole, you know, we don't have the working version of 3-wave capture we need. Uh, like I said, we have the assets. 
but I don't have to work in three-wave capture. And apparently, using the version 2.57 did not seem to do what I wanted it to do. So, so much of that idea. Anything over here? No. But that's basically this area. Um, there's a waterway, and there's also a staircase. Where's this lead? This leads to an underground little area with another rocket launcher. Can't have enough of those. And also some windows, which allow you to decimate people. I see. So it's like symmetrical windows on each side, obviously. The red base is going to look very, very similar to this one, obviously. It's going to have, like, the exact same design. Because symmetrical design is the big key of these. It wants to be very similar. But here's the water. We can drop in here and probably get a shortcut right to the red base. Let's follow this down. Where, where, wait, where are we going? I can't even see where I'm going. You know what would be nice? A bio suit! Okay, so now we made it to this side. Let's get to the red base. Swim inside here, and we'll find our way inside the red base. Then we just need to return the other way, and we'll basically be good that way. Of course, the question is, what about the three secrets? I haven't found any of them yet. Are there secrets in this level? Or am I just going insane? But yeah, big things to note about the November level. First of all, there's a big thing of secrets, which definitely is something we don't generally see in levels. Custom textures, which is very rare to see in levels. So we're definitely seeing a lot more than you'd be seeing in previous months here. It definitely has a different feeling to it. But as you can see, this is very similar to the other side. You have a little area in here. That is basically that. Yeah, there's really not a lot to this one as said it's basically identical to the other side. So, we kind of already saw the other side, so we're really just flying through this side. And now I'm asking the stupid question once again. Where's the freaking secrets in this level? There's three of them. Has anyone seen any? Uh, yeah. I couldn't even begin to tell you where the secrets are. Wait a minute, what in God's name is all this about? No, wait, this is just a way to return. Yeah, because you have this few way intersections that lead around and all that. Okay. <gasps> Oh, secret! Yep, this is a secret area. Basically with a grenade launcher. I figured out that one. Now let me guess. The other secret's inside like a... A base or something. You like go into the bases and there's like a secret on each side. Which leads to essentially the same area. Maybe it's the area with the bio suit. But yeah, we did find at least the... Um, whatchamacallit. The quad damage. We definitely need the quad damage. I can definitely support a quad damage. So now the question becomes, where is the other secret? Trying to find the secret, people. I'm trying to shoot all these walls in the hopes that it like, reveals something to me. Because that's really all I have to work with here. Keep shooting walls and hope to God something happens. Gotta love old school shooters like these, right? Totally. But yeah, there seems to be nothing here. Maybe it's upstairs? I mean, look at all these walls. All these symmetrical walls that could have something in them. Maybe it's somewhere in the base. You know, it could always just be that. Or it could be this. Very obvious little lit up area. I see ya. That makes more sense. Okay, we found a little area with some yellow armor and some other resources. And I'm assuming there's another area in the blue base that's almost identical. And that will give us the last secret of this place. Hooray! We're not going to be stuck here endlessly. That's always a positive thing, right people? Not being stuck endlessly in the nightmarish level. So, uh, yeah, let's head up here and find where that one would be. That's that side. We want to go into, like, the dark area. I'm assuming it's this. Yes, indeed. There we are. We open this, and here's the other secret area, which is just like the other one. Three out of three secrets. Area explored. There's really not much more for us to do. Um, as said, I wish I could showcase the whole three-wave capture portion of it and show, like, where exactly, like, the flags are, what the flags look like, because we didn't even get to see what flags look like. All we got to see was the custom level itself. And yeah, that's basically all we're going to really be able to see with these three wave capture maps, sadly. Um, as I said, I was able to uh, cover up to 2.51. I may be able to cover it later on 
when we get to, like, maybe there's a version 4.0 or whatever that, like, releases the products like that again. But as it stands right now, I cannot cover the three-wave capture in any form outside of just covering the little levels. So needless to say, we can showcase these levels, showcase what it's about at least, get at least the idea and feel of what the levels are. I mean, you can see blatantly where the bases are and therefore where the flags would be located. And we at this point know what the wave capture is about. But yeah, it is a shame that we don't get the full experience, if you will, of it. We don't get the ability to see three wave capture and its full glory. So, it's going to stink a little bit. I wish we could get that full, complete setup. But as said, I'm basically doing the best that I can do with the resources I've been presented to me. And honestly, at this point, I've dug through a bunch of different versions of 3-Wave Capture. None of them are really helping me out here. So, I'm basically going to just have to work with what I got, use the levels I got, and showcase basically what exists. I can't really do any more than that. I can't really assume anything. I can't really rip any more resources than what I have done. And as you see, the version 2.7 whatever. Um, is it 2.7 or 2.8? Um, 2.5. 2.5.1 does not really work with this sadly. So I had to try it. Had to see if it would actually give me something. But sadly, it did not seem to do anything. Maybe if I turned it to deathmatch mode. Maybe it was because I stayed in single player. Before we actually fin finish this up and find uh, give up on the whole thing, maybe I should change it to deathmatch. That might have done it. So let's see here. Team play, two, five, six, I think it is. And then we want map CTF1. And let's see if we can get this working. Well, as you see, I spawned at the bases with this. So the base spawning does work with deathmatch mode on, obviously. And there we are. Capture the flag. Now, the custom models aren't right. I think it was supposed to have its own custom models, but it doesn't. It just has basically flags. But as you see, the flags are located in their proper locations. So we do get flags. We do get our ability to use our grappling hook, just like we would in normal um, three-wave capture. There's really no other fancy weapons or anything like that. It was all about focusing on the team play values. Oh, look, here's like the powerful runes. Basically, each one of these runes gives you like basic boost abilities. I think strength gives you the ability to cause like double the damage. It's basically like a quad damage except you always have it. Um, and basically someone else could pick up like a different rune. And there's like haste which makes you fire faster. There's regeneration which makes you like heal obviously. And yeah, as you can see there's basically a log which told me I just picked up the flag. And now I'll basically just carry back the flag to the other base. So yeah, as you see, Capture the Flag does work. It just doesn't have the custom models, sadly. Which is weird because I have the custom models lined up, so I'm assuming the entities weren't really referenced at this point. Um, it probably wasn't looking for a custom flag dot model. It was just using key and normal things like that. So therefore, you're not really hearing any of the custom sounds. You're not really seeing the custom assets. But at least we get what we had in 3-Wave Capture 2.51, which is the ability to capture a flag and return it to base. And we get to see where the bases are and get to see all that. So, this is actually working. Capture the flag is working in a basic format. It's just not the same as, say, if we had the three, uh, version 3, which would have us having the support for custom models. So, I mean, I... Could potentially modify these, I'm assuming, to get the custom models in there. But I feel like that wouldn't be keeping it true to the original form. Plus, like I said, I don't know what else um, 3-Wave Capture version 3.0 really did. It probably did some bug fixes at the very least. Probably had some new impulses and various features. So I'm just going to have to ignore that portion of it for now. I probably will mention, like, the different things on the Wiki, like the custom models. But for the time being, we'll just stick mostly to covering the maps, showcase the maps, and go from there. At least we have the maps to work with. And as you see, it does work and capture the flag, which is something I got fearful about for a moment. But luckily, we were able to figure out a solution for. So, with that in mind, that in mind, there's really not much more to say about this one. Um, nor will there be much to say about any of these. These uh, Capture the Flag maps are relatively simple. 
because they have defined bases. And defined bases, in turn, mean a lot of symmetrical design. It means that both sides are going to have to be very, very similar in order for there to be equal forces opposing each other, obviously. So really, the only thing really different is that middle area. Outside of the middle area, you usually have the same look on both sides. And that's kind of what we had here. Uh, the most interesting thing about it probably was the custom textures. Other than that, it felt like another little map that felt rather boring to kind of get through. But at least we got to see it. We're getting to some newer concepts and newer things. We haven't really seen many Capture the Flag maps with this whole thing and the fact that we're covering eight of these maps back to back. We're definitely getting a lot more Capture the Flag levels. Capture the Flag is becoming a lot more prominent of a thing in the Quake community. As well as rune-based aspects, which really is like the start of runequake and all that stuff. So you're really seeing a lot of the big um, multiplayer-based modes really becoming a thing at this point in the community. And really, that is a big thing that's separating, say, November from, say, September and um, October and earlier. Whereby October had some custom maps and started doing stuff like this, but nothing to this level of ambition. Anyway, as said, this is the first one. We have seven more to do. I'll bother with them as I get the free time to do them. But at least this gives us the concept, gives us the idea to work with. And at least we get to at least understand what we're kind of dealing with. So that way next time around, I can just check out the level and go from there without having to ramble for half an hour about three-wave capture. Anyway, thank you all for watching. It has been an adventure. And I guess I'll be seeing you all, well, in some of the other levels that were made for a three-wave capture. As said, this was the only one made by the guy who made the um, modification himself. So I have no idea how well those will compare. But we'll see them when we get to them. Anyway, see you all next time.